immediately to the Quartz Lounge. And this is too ridiculous. I'm not going to let you go. I'm going on that plane. Of all the mad, insane. Oh, Alex, please. We've been over this so many times. Let's face it. We haven't been happy for the past two years. All right, it's been my fault. I admit it. Now, I demand you cancel this trip. Demand? I don't think you're putting anything over on me. China, Red Cross. There are plenty of unmarried women for that. That's not why you're going. Oh, please. You're going to see someone else who's asked you to come. I'm sorry. But if you refuse to be reasonable, I'll divorce you. I'll charge you with desertion. All right, Alex. If that's the way you want it, do that. Honolulu, Coral Island, Guam, and the Orient. Mrs. Alexander Weston. All passengers for the Seabird, please collect your tickets to go immediately Here, to the spot now. Yes, sir. No, Marshal. Is everything in order? Yes, Miss Chase. Here are your passports and health certificates. I made the reservations in the name of Doris Bailey. Thank you, Marshal. I'll cable as soon as I reach Hong Kong. Yes, Miss Chase. Thank you. And a pleasant journey. Say, buddy, who is that? I, Miss Doris Bailey. Everything's in order, Miss Chase. I mean Miss Bailey. You know, we feel a great responsibility having you on board. Won't you just wait in the lounge, Miss Bailey? State Senator Corey. Senator Corey, just a moment. Hold it. Thank you. Now, Senator, give us the old Star Spangled Banner look. Thank you. Are you flying to China, Senator Corey? Well, I'm not walking. A first trip, Senator? Yes, this will be the first time that I take wings over the great Pacific. Pardon, Senator, is this trip government business or a private deal in China? You will astonish me. What kind of a private deal could I Senator, possibly... you know they need a lot of war supplies over there these days, and with the right man on it. Very great. Very clever. Good day, gentlemen. But, but Senator... Senator... Here you are, Mr. Honeyman. Thank you. Mr. Brand. Calling Mr. Brand. Message for Mr. Brand at the information desk. Mr. Brand. Is that Mr. Harrison Brand? Is he a passenger? Yes, sir. Sydney. This is Franklin Sydney. You have your passport and certificate of health for your return, Mrs. Sydney? Yes. May I have them? Oh, yes. Yes, here they are. This is going to be very exciting. Really? Oh, yes. My son is in Shanghai. He doesn't know I'm coming. It's been so long since I've heard from him. Oh, I'm sorry to be taking so much time. Are you one of the passengers? I won't be if you don't step on it. Iris Compton. Mr. Brand. Calling Mr. Brand. Message for Mr. Brand at the information desk. Hello, Curtis. This is Honeyman. Hey, I thought you said this deal was undercover. Oh, is that so? Well, do you know who's on this plane? Brand. Brand of Caldwell Munitions. Sure, there's a fortune at stake if he doesn't start cutting prices. If he does, I'll cut his throat, and I'm not kidding. Who? Senator Corey, on this plane? Say, if I can get to him before Brand. Right, I'll cable you. Double the I believe, at five. One more passenger, Robert Malone. He's going from Albuquerque, be here on time. Mr. Malone, calling Mr. Malone. Please report at once to registration desk. Hey, you fellows weren't going to leave me. We thought possibly you'd been delayed, Mr. Malone. Delayed? Now, whatever made you think that? All aboard, Mr. Malone. Happy landing, Jeff. So long, Jim. Badly, sir? Son, if I thought me better, I'd sing. And then you'd be sorry you messed me. Sorry I did. <clears throat> uh, since we've many hours ahead, uh, we should get acquainted. I'm John P. Corey, formerly state senator. I'm merely Miss Bailey. Oh, indeed. We at the nation's health have done a great work for modern transportation, don't you think? We've made this ocean a mere mill pond, and the whole world our neighbors. Can I say more? 
I hope not, Senator. It's too funny as it is. Don't spoil it. Well, Harrison Brand. This is a coincidence. Hello, Honeyman. Pleasure trip? And what a pleasure. It'll be a honeymoon if I meet the right party. Oh, that's fine. And if you don't meet the right party, I will. Now, that's quite a thought. Hang on to that. Very beautiful, isn't it? Now, look, my name is Malone. Does it make you happy? Honolulu, Hong Kong, or Shanghai, kid? Shanghai. No, vacation by request. Then you and I ought to knock off a few hours without boring each other. What's your racket? Besides health. Me, I'm the forgotten man, trying to make myself a little more forgotten. From the land? Don't be so definite. But I'm not exactly on parade. Well, I suppose you're one of our country's enterprising young men, girdling the world for new business. Uh, perhaps you'll make a fourth at bridge. God, for money? Why, that would be gambling. Say, we seem to be two of a kind on this deal. Let's keep it that way. Now, don't get your face red. This is a long trip. We both have a lot to think about. Let's hold everything under control. Sure, that's okay. Say, you seem to be pretty regular. You're regular, too. Radio Graham for you, Miss Bailey. Excuse me. <laughs> No answer. I've been one club, I think. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, let me know, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I must be very awkward. Or oh, perhaps the ship is. It's the ship. Have you made the trip before? No, and I think this once will close the book for me. And you? My first trip, too. I think women have more courage than men. I think you've got something there, Mother. You can't prove it by me. I always defend men when I'm with women. Men are a strange lot, but they're useful sometimes. There are some good ones. My son is one. Your son is in China? Yes, I haven't seen him in five years. He doesn't know I'm coming. Oh, no wonder you're so excited. It'd be a great surprise for him. He hasn't written me in over a year, but I suppose it's all the trouble over there, and he's been very busy helping to settle it. He must be very clever. He is. Oh, I'm sorry. I may be boring you. No, not at all. Do you like me to tell your fortune? I read the cards, you know. Oh, I don't believe in that. You may not believe in it, young woman, but it's very funny how often the things we see in cards come true. Cut three times, please. You're married. Right. You're returning to a dark man in China. <laughs> Maybe I didn't cut the cards right. Oh, yes. Here's another man very much in love with you. No. That card is never wrong. It always spells romance. There he is again, the same man. Maybe it's the altitude. No, I'm sure it's a man. Isn't there always? That's what's wrong with the world. No more men in my life. Oh, Stuart, aren't we over the Japanese current? Why, yes. You must be an experienced traveler. No, 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 I've never been near the ocean before. Well, how did you know then? Well, there's a great many things in 50 years, young man. Some of them very strange. You have to wait until you're 50. Oh, look at the clouds. They look like strange worlds where anything might happen. I don't believe it. Oh, yes, it's very interesting. This is the sunken continent to move. We're over it now. That's how East and America were joined. Right below us this minute, there was a very high civilization. I think we must be off our course a little. Officer, aren't we off our course? Oh, madam, that is not more than one or two degrees. Of course, nothing serious. One or two degrees is quite a lot. I think we're coming into a storm. Oh, ridiculous. Why, my dear lady, it's all sunshine. You were right, Mrs. Sidney. Maybe you can tell us when we're going to come out of it. We haven't really gotten into it yet. That's very encouraging. Coral Island, Pacific Sea 
Bird calling Carl Island, 16703, approximate position, north, 42, west, 143, ceiling closing in fast. Are you feeling any better, Mrs. Sidney? I'm all right, dear. Don't worry too much about me. Take care of yourself. You'll need your strength. Not a sign of life anywhere. Not a living thing, man or beast. Where are we? That's what I want to know. It's gross mismanagement. I shall insist upon an investigation immediately I return. Mm, good idea, Senator. When you figure out exactly how you're going to get back, will you let us in on it? Boy, boy, where are we anyway? As far as I can make out, we're nowhere. Where are the officers? They went down with the ship. I guess the door must have stuck. Oh, it's too bad. I, I'm very sorry, but here we are, trapped on an uninhabited island. It's unprecedented. Oh, is that what it is? This is pretty funny. I was trying to run away from a nervous breakdown. Now, listen, everybody, there's no use getting excited. There might be a town right around the corner. Good. The least you can do is to try to find some shelter. Lady, I lost my job a few hours ago. I'll do my share and no more. Now, see here, young Make man. Make out a report for the investigating committee, blubber puss. We're all in the same boat now. Cheer up, everybody. It's a pretty nice place. There's nothing to worry about. Yet. Just one big happy family. Hey, what is that over there? Isn't that smoke? Sure it's smoke. Well, what are we wasting our time for? Let's investigate. Why, someone <laughs> Wait a 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is it? What is it? Did you see anybody? Oh, shut up. It looks creepy to me. Lay off that gun, will you? You'll start eating with it one of these days and it'll blow your head off. All right, look out. Look out. Young man, who are you? Suppose I ask the question. What is this place? Where are we? About 1,200 miles off the nearest ship or air lane. Oh. You enjoy privacy? You like it here. Are you alone here? I was. Say, pal, what about some food? We dropped out of the sky last night in a burning plane. Guess we're what you'd call survivors. Where are the officers? Well, they went down with the plane, the poor fellows. We want transportation at once to the nearest port. I'm sure you do. How about a boat? Sorry. How far are we from Shanghai? 1,500 miles. Do any boats ever stop here? No. But I've only been here a year. We must get away somehow. Look! There's a boat. Don't get excited. Yes. It's mine. I thought you said you didn't have a boat. I said you didn't have a boat. Now, just a minute. Are we to understand that you refuse to pilot us? Don't you think a good breakfast would uh, be about the most important thing right now? That's the most sensible thing that's been said yet. You'll excuse me. Mr. Tennyson. Any more coconut milk? No, sir. Another no, no, no. bad meal, do you think? Oh, it's awfully hard. Well, well, it served its purpose, Mr. Taylor, but now let's get down to business. Business? Yes. You must be reasonable. Why? Why? Don't be ridiculous. Why should any man be reasonable? Well, I'm sure I don't know. You seem to resent our coming here. I most certainly do. Well, obviously, it's not to our own choice. I imagine not. Why won't you take us to the mainland, apart from your inconvenience? Let's say that is the reason. Man alive, can't you understand? We're people of affairs. We have missions in this world. Now, now, Senator, you're taking yourself too seriously. But really, Mr. Taylor, it's the only decent thing you can do. Decent? Yes, decent. What's to prevent our taking the boat? Is there a navigator in the crowd? I think I can read a compass. I think. Well, if you think you can navigate a thousand miles of treacherous sea, why... Is it possible that your man, Mr. Ping, can sail the boat? Yes, he can. But he's not going to. Oh. Ah, this well, is a well, well, Now, look, here. let's understand each other thoroughly. You want to get to your destinations for reasons of your own. I refuse to take you for reasons of my own. That I have personal reasons goes without saying, and I don't want any more probing. I didn't invite you here. But as long as you are here, I'll do my best to treat you as guests. Only as long as you act as guests. Is that clear? Mr. Teller. Time for a news bulletin. Put it on, Pink. All right. Radio? 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 Just an old-fashioned battery set. <laughs> and with troops of the borders, all Central Europe is tense, awaiting the next move of the dictator. We now swing across from Central Europe to somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, where the mystery of the giant plane seabird is cloaked in silence. Although hope has not been abandoned, it is considered almost certain that the plane and all its occupants went down into the sea. We formally broadcast the identity of those aboard with the exception of three passengers. They have now been established through dispatches from San Francisco. Traveling aboard the plane incognito under the name of Doris Bailey was Miss Thelma Chase, heiress to the Chase Million and one of the richest girls in the world. It is said that she was going abroad to absent herself from the growing labor troubles in one of her factories which is now closed by strike. Another on the plane was Robert Malone, known in the underworld as the Torpedo, a former member of the notorious Dutch Swanson gang. Malone was fleeing to the Orient with $150,000, which he had held back from some gang operation. The reason for his hasty flight was said that he had been marked for death by his fellow mobsters. Also on the plane Take it was Miss Iris Compton, who was being sought by the district attorney's office for questioning regarding her knowledge of underworld activities. Newspapermen alleged that she was ordered to leave the city until the investigation blew up. Harrison Brand and T.L. Honeyman, whose identity was reported before, were munition salesmen for two unnamed competitive firms, both hastening to the Orient.
to close gigantic deals for the sale of ammunition. And this brings to a close our news broadcast for this evening. The program comes to you... That makes at least three murderers. Ladies and gentlemen, now we're really getting acquainted. It seems to me, Miss Compton, that from now on, out of respect for these ladies, that you... Senator, you shut up. I advise you to take that advice, Senator. You too, Malone. Mr. Taylor, I'll give you $100,000 to take me to China. You mean just you? I can't speak for the others. You can put me down for 50 Gs and another 50,000 for Miss Compton. Thanks, buddy. That's very thoughtful. That's splitting the bankroll with you two to one. I need that last 50,000 to get started again. I'll match Miss Chase's offer, Taylor, but you'll have to wait until I put over this deal in China. That is if the senator here lends proper influence. Well, if it's that kind of a deal, I'll double it. Well, senator, here's your chance. These gentlemen are insinuating that your help can help put over their munitions deal. Of course, the thousands of lives involved wouldn't matter to you. Really, gentlemen, you, you put me in a very embarrassing position. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you told me who you are. I'm a nurse returning to China for humanitarian reasons. Of course, I realize that means nothing to you. A uh, graduate nurse? Yes. Been in China before? Yes. In what hospital? The Lady of the Lamp in Kuchel. Why? Oh, just curious. Well, what about it? I'm sorry to inconvenience Mrs. Sidney and Mrs. Weston, but I'm not taking any of you. You think you're going to keep us on this island while there's a boat around that'll sail? You're crazy. Why get excited? We don't care much where we're going. As long as it isn't back. And there's just one other little thing. When I arrived on this island, the first thing I did was to build this shack. And then I began scouting for food. If you think you're going to run this island, tell me what you'd like for dinner, you'd better try and think up another idea. I'm not running a rest camp for nervous patients, and I'm a little sick of answering silly questions. To live on this island, two things are necessary. Food and shelter. And from now on, if you want either, you'll have to find your own. I prefer my own company. He means we're very welcome, folks. get away with this. We've got a right to eat. I'll talk to him. Talk. Oh, did you want something? Now look here, Mr. Taylor. We're perfectly willing to pay for the food. I'm sorry, Senator, but your money is no good here. Quite willing to let you use my fishing tackle. In fact, I might even stretch it a point. I'll give you some of my fish. Oh, no, no, not this one. Oh. But you'll have to cook them yourselves. Oh, I, I don't mind that. Can anybody cook? And one other thing. If you don't clean up afterwards, you can't use my fireplace again. I'll see to that, too. And you'll have to gather your own firewood. Oh. Very well. You'll find the fish outside under the damp leaves. No. Oh, hey. I'll take it easy. <laughs> What are we going to do, Mr. Taylor? I don't know. I'm just as anxious to get rid of them as they ought to go. We stay, they swim. You don't take turns. You can't go back. I know that thing. Very well. Put it here. We must all cooperate. Ah, very clever of you girls. I'm very fond of tennis. Now, let's go about this in organized, democratic fashion. We'll divide up the work. Mrs. Sidney, can you cook? I've been frying fish for 30 years. Fine, fine. Uh, Joseph, you can prepare the vegetables. Malone, uh, you can clean the fish. Miss Spelman Chase may serve the meal, if you will. And uh, Mrs. Weston, you can clean up afterwards. Brandon Honeyman, you can gather the wood. There now, that's democratic. Outside of eating, Senator, just what do you do? Why, I'm the organizer. Well, who elected oh. you? If this is going to be democratic, let's have an election. Here, here, here. here. I nominate the senator to clean the fish. I have just a minute. I second the motion that the senator cleans the fish. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Again. I, uh, I protest. Over, over, over. This is against all conceptions of democracy. It's a virtual, a virtual dictatorship. On the contrary, Senator, it's perfect democracy. The voice of the people. If you don't clean the fish, you don't eat. finding you here. Go away. I thought this was my boat. Maybe I'm wrong. Come on out. I can. Oh. Here. Wrap yourself in this. Well? I was swimming and got tired. I stopped to rest. Good. I'm glad to see you. Oh, really? I've been waiting to talk to you. Conscience been bothering you? You do have a conscience. Mm, a little. Well, that's at least one human quality. That was a pretty speech you made last night. Wasn't it deserved? Maybe, but still you can't expect us to accept it gracefully. After all, our lives do mean something to us. You don't think the men are going to let you get away with it? Sorry, there's nothing they can do about it. Anyhow, I'd rather you pleaded your own case. Well, I'd rather not. But what are you going to do about Mrs. Sidney? She can't stand this place. Too bad. But it'll be too bad for you if you don't sail us, because we'll take the boat ourselves. Now, look here, young lady. You're wasting your time inspecting this boat. I can tell you and all the others everything you need to know. The magnet is hidden on the island. So is the gasoline. And I don't think anybody can handle sail, so I left that. And all the charts are hidden, too. All right, Mr. Taylor. But if you think you can keep eight people on this island when you have the means of taking them away, you're crazy. There, there. Now, if you keep on talking like this, we're both going to get feverish. Come on, come on. Oh. Let's cool off. What's on your mind, Ping? I've been thinking, Mr. Taylor. You have? Well, so have I, Ping, but it hasn't gotten me anywhere. Keep Ping somewhere. Well, I've always said you were a better thinker than I. <laughs> yes. Ping, these people here, it's bad business. I wish we knew what we could do about it. They must go. Yes, but how? I think there's something in what you say, Ping. It's pretty risky. Even if we took a chance and dropped them off in an isolated spot in the mainland at midnight. Thanks, Ping. That's probably a very good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some sad news for you. I've changed my mind. You're leaving here. What? Well, young man, I'm glad you see the path of decency at last. My conscience is stricken, Senator. Mr. Honeyman and Mr. Brand being kept from their noble work causes me sleepless nights. I can't stand it any longer. And poor Miss Chase. Thirty millions and no place to spend it. That's a tragedy. You gonna take it? Yeah, you on on pilot. I'm not going. My Chinese servant will be your captain. However, there's just one little difficulty. There are nine of you, and the boat only holds six. The rest of you will have to wait about three months. Oh, well, the, the time will soon pass for the others. Now, about the six. And naturally, age comes first, then the ladies. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Quiet! There's nothing to be gained by disorderly conduct. Now, it's obvious that the first to go should be those whose objectives are the most important. Certainly, it's more fitting that a lady like Miss Chase should perceive this. One more crack on you, sir. Forget it, will you? Take that back. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss. I apologize. I was going to offer to stay here, but that's out. Well, if you're all through, I'll give you my decision. Number one is Ping. Number two, Mrs. Sidney. Three and four, Miss Compton and Mr. Malone. Number five, Mrs. Weston. But you said there were six. Yes, that's my difficulty. Let's see, there are four left. Well, I suppose we'll have to toss for it. It's Jessup. But I don't understand why this is that. One toss for four people and then you... It's silly. Senator, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Too bad, Miss Chase. You can't leave me here. You simply can't. 
Uh, that hundred thousand dollars that you offered me, Miss Chase, perhaps Miss Compton would take that for her place. For three months? Yeah, that's fair. Now I can have that nervous breakdown I've been putting off for years. Boy, will I enjoy it. Now look, everybody, when you come right down to it, there's no particular rush for me to leave this island. I mean, after all, what's three months more or less to me? Well, and that's well, that 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 very fine of you, Malone. Well, that's settled. Oh, by the way, you sail at noon tomorrow. You can't get away with this, Taylor. Take it easy, Brand. He won't. Your best course, Ping, will be to avoid the Sarman group of islands. You understand the map? Yes, Mr. Taylor. It's going to be tough taking five people. We make it. Well, run along now and check everything. Yes, Mr. Taylor. Oh, hello, Mrs. Weston. Your bag's all packed? I wanted to thank you, Mr. Taylor. I've been doing you a great injustice these past few days. Mental murder? Just about. I'm sorry you're not going with us. I'm sorry you're not staying. You're a curious person. I suppose all my life I'll be wondering who you are and why you're on this island. It'll be most irritating. You'll forget all about this island the minute you get back to civilization. I don't think so. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, we don't want to pull any strong-arm stuff, Taylor, but right here and now, you're going to listen to reason. I thought you understood me. That was your mistake. You're going to understand us. Listen, Taylor, you can't set yourself up as a tin god. You either take us or we take you. Couldn't get here earlier. All right, you mud. Take it on the lamb. Thanks. It's okay. Hey, wouldn't it be a riot if I had to become the cop around this joint? Fine boys, Honeyman and Brand. Very. You should find that company quite enjoyable these next three months. Yeah, maybe I ought to keep them here. You know, there's an idea in that. Quarantine all munitions makers and their salesmen on an island and let them shoot it out. Do you ever do anything with your ideas? Oh, I just dream them up. That's what I thought. Well, it's about time you started putting them to work. Anything you say. Leave Honeyman and Brand here. You sail us instead of Ping, and then start kidnapping munitions makers. I have a better idea. Right. Will it work? Well, that depends on you. Send Honeyman and Brand back with Ping, and you stay. Thanks. Oh, seriously, Anne. Won't you let someone else go, and you stay till the boat comes back? We haven't begun to know each other yet. Why should we? For the best reason in the world. What's that? Because we want her. Oh, do we? Oh, 
for me. Where is she? Is she hurt badly? It's nothing serious, Miss Sidney. We'll take you up to the shack and fix you up right away. Give me a lift, man. Right, take it easy now, boy. Careful. Yes, sir. I asked them, I don't know if they're new. Aren't you feeling $8.99? Oh, shut up. We'll clean that cut and fix you like new. All you got to do is be a good boy. You want to make some money, don't you? Yes, sir. You bring us to the mainland and we'll give you $5,000. That'll make you the richest Chinaman on the coast. What do you say? $5,000, lots of the money. You're a smart boy. Well, can you beat this? And to think that guy Taylor was pulling all that stuff about leading a clean, simple life? The Shanghai News, get this. Convicted doctor escaped. Dr. James Taylor, prominent Shanghai surgeon who was convicted of murder in the first degree for the slaying of Thomas Sidney, a young American connected with the underworld, escaped from prison last night, aided by his Chinese servant. That's me. <laughs> Police, however, feel certain he will be captured within the next 24 hours. When was that? A year ago. I guess cops are like the world over. <laughs> hey, you never can tell. There might be a reward on that guy's head. We'll find out when we notify the authorities. I want to see that guy, Mr. Dr. Taylor, in Shanghai when they bring him back. The rest of you wait outside, please. Malone, get that hot water off the fire. Right. Mrs. Weston, you'll find my kid on the table. The dressings are inside. Mrs. Weston, see where Malone is with that water. Yes, Doctor. Now, Mrs. Finley, please don't say anything. Thank you. On that plane, remember? I had a feeling this was going to be an adventure. Yes, that's right, you did. Now, please. Oh. Oh. I'm ready. Hold ahead, Mrs. Weston. Now, Mrs. Sidney, just split your teeth. I'm going to poke that bullet now. She needs an anesthetic, Doctor. We haven't any. I'm afraid it's too late anyway, but we'll do what we can. It is too late. Don't worry about me, dear. Seems as if I was right about everything. Except seeing my son again. Sam, will you tell him, please? You'll find his picture. His name is Thomas Sidney. Did you know him? Yes, I know him. He's a very fine boy, Mrs. Sidney. I know. I know. I'm awfully sorry, Anne. I'm afraid I've made an awful mess of everything. You mustn't blame yourself. Oh, yes. I feel responsible for Mrs. Sidney's death. But it was an accident. If I'd have taken him away the first day, this never would have happened. Oh, they'd have had to wait for the second trip just the same. The only difference is it might have happened three days ago. Oh, I wish I could forget it. I keep thinking of Mrs. Sidney's son waiting for her. He won't be. He was killed a year ago, Anne. You really knew him? I thought you were just trying to comfort her. He was mixed up in the most vicious, depraved racket in the Orient. Finally caused an innocent woman to commit suicide. The woman's brother killed him. Maybe it's just as well Mrs. Sidney never got there. But how did you know? I was that woman's doctor. That couldn't have anything to do with your being here. In a way, it has. Do you really think we'll get away from here in three months? As soon as Honeyman and Brand reach the mainland, they'll tell me. I don't think so. You don't really think they've killed Ping, do you? If they have, they'll never get to the mainland. If they haven't, Ping will never take them there. In which event, they probably will kill him. Well, the future doesn't look very bright, does it? Oh, 
Now, look. I don't like the way you're washing those pots. The sweet potatoes we had for lunch today tasted of yesterday's fish. I haven't yet mastered the art. I'm sorry. There's no art to it. It's just elbow grease. If you weren't so lazy, you'd take those things down to the beach and rub them with sand. That cleans them thoroughly, and I've told you that before. Hello, Delmonico. What's on the menu? Well, I'm inventing something. It's a combination of all kinds of things. You mean all kinds of fish? Yeah. What you gonna call it tonight? Us the chef. What do you call it again? It's William Bates. Oh, yeah? Fish chowder in Brooklyn. Come on, let's get the table set, honey. I'll set the table without the honey. How about a swim? I can't. I've got work to do. We're not all so lucky. Well, well, who'd have thought three months ago you'd wind up here? There you were. Oh, dear, life is so difficult. I don't know whether to spend the summer in South Hampton or Bar Harbor. And the servant problem, my dear. And my stocks and bonds and factories. <laughs> Say, I wonder how those poor guys are getting along in your factory. You know, the ones that were striking for shorter hours and better pay. I'll bet they miss you. If you don't shut up, what did I say? What did I do? You said too much. Isn't it bad enough around here? Work, work, work from early morning till late at night. I can't even go for a swim. And look at you, supply clerk and housekeeper. That's because I've had experience as a stenographer. In what type of establishment? Never mind that. I know my business. And how? I'm a white-collar worker. What can you do? There are plenty of things I could do. It so happens that Mr. Taylor and Mr. Malone won't give you a tumble. And are you burned? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Yeah, you're just sore because you're left out in the cold. Not that you have to be. <laughs> There's always dear Just this. <laughs> See you later, Polly. Right back, Tut. Bula Bay. I think we can call him in now. <laughs> if I had Taylor here, I'd I'd show him something. Dinner. Mm -hmm. Fish dinner. So we still have two roofs in the wall to finish. We need at least a hundred more. Dinner, I think we've got enough. Hello, Thelma. Hello, Johnny. Where is everybody? Swimming, enjoying themselves as usual while we do the work. Thelma, we're being exploited. Don't I know it. The nerve of them assigning the menial work to us. Our services could be used to much better advantage in many respects. Do you know that I offered to write a history of our stay on this island, and what did Taylor say? All right, what did he say? Unproductive. Well, there doesn't seem to be much we can do about it. If there were something we could do about it, would you be interested? You've been thinking again. Don't be silly. Don't be silly! Did it ever occur to you that Taylor's reasons for hiding upon this island must arise from some criminal past? Are you just catching on? That occurred to me five minutes after we got here. All right, then if he's a criminal, he's probably a liar as well. So are most people. What of it? What of it? What of it? What of it? That bird hears everything. Listen. He told us that we were hundreds of miles off any ship lane, and we, like a pack of fools, believed him. How do we know? How do we know? It's possible that every day, just beyond that horizon, the ships are passing back and forth, and we, like a pack of fools, sit here. What do you want to do, swim out there and thumb your way? Oh, no, but those ships can be reached. Has it occurred to you how I've spent my time these evenings? Frankly, Senator, it hasn't. Well, the first few weeks were spent purely in thought, general strategy, and then I hit upon a tactic. A tactic? A tactic, and I immediately set to work. Here they come. I'll tell you more after supper. We'll be off this island in a week, but remember. I wonder what we're going to have for dinner. Well, it's nice to wonder, isn't it? You don't suppose it could be a fish, fish, do you? <laughs> Let's get that food. Come on, Thelma, get busy and serve the dinner. Oh, 
You hungry? Well, couldn't be hungry, or I'll tell you. You know, when I was a boy in Chicago, I worked in one of the big packing firms there. All I did all day long was just smoke fish. You got must have looked awfully sweet. I got so I thought I could never look another fish in the eye. But it gave me an idea. Now, suppose that I build a smoke oven. Then when the stormy season comes along, we'll have plenty of smoked fish. Not a new idea at all, Mr. Malone, I can assure you. The government's been talking for years about shortage and drugs. It's an old story. Talking? Then if we really do it, it'll be quite new. Hey, what's the idea? Is that all I get? I'm thinking about your figure, dear. You're getting awfully plump. Has everybody been served? Fine. Yes, thank yes, you. Indeed. Then maybe I can sit down and have my dinner. Sure, take it on me. Have you young ladies had a nice day? A perfectly lovely day. I paid a social call on Miss Thelma Chase of Long Island. She gave me a delightful luncheon. That was sweet of you, Thelma. I'm so happy to see you girls getting on so well. Sweet of me. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's an unfair distribution of work around here, and I object. Some people do practically nothing and have all the fun. You're all taking advantage of me. Why can't I go swimming when everyone else does and take time off for fun and rest? I'm entitled to a fair share in all the comforts, and if I don't get it, I'll... I'll... Well, I'll just sit down. Sit down! Say, you know, if the workers at the Chase Company had an eloquent leader like you to speak for them, I'll bet you they wouldn't have much trouble getting what they're after. Too bad you're not all shareholders, isn't it? I think Thelma's complaint is justified. And I nominate Johnny to do the housework for a while. All in favor? Aye! It's just too preposterous! Sorry, Johnny, but it seems you're elected. You see, as you're completely unequipped for any productive work, you'll have to remain unskilled labor. Join the Navy and learn a trade. Uh, but I, I cannot... We'll, we'll see about this later. Just one big happy family. Don't worry, Johnny. There are only three meals a day. I'll be taking them. Very well. I doubt it. Well, keep them at it. Keep them at it. Don't worry, I will. Hey, where's Iris? Probably waiting on the corner. Iris? Well, what did I do? This is just what I'm going to find out. Why don't you ask your questions first and talk afterwards, then? Because I like it this way better. Now, come on, what's going on between you two? What two? Are you going to pull that baby face line? You know who I mean. Oh, you mean Thelma? <laughs> you know better than that. I haven't given that name a tumble. Honest. What do you know about honest? Didn't I see the way she's been heaping your plate, feeding you up? What about that undercover talk she was giving you just now by the table? Oh, you mean when she was kind of whispering in my ear there? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was nothing. It, uh... <laughs> Sees that she's just learned how to weave this grass, and that, uh, well, she said she thought that I might like her to make me a little window shade from a shack. What for? <laughs> well, she said she thought I might like a little privacy. That's just what I thought. If the time ever comes when you need privacy, I'm making the curtain. All right. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Now, get this straight. The next time I catch you fooling around with that common kitchen help, it'll be curtains for you, not the house. Constant, I didn't know you can. You know, Anne, our little community hasn't turned out so badly. I hated the idea at first, but now everybody's changed. It's not so bad. Nobody's changed. They haven't changed inside. Never satisfied, are you? No, and I never will be here. Never. Don't you see? I've got to get back. Back to what? Civilization. This isn't living. Oh, it all depends on how you look at it. Your civilization isn't so civilized these days. Well, you won't change that by running away. I suppose I did run away from my job. I didn't think much about it at the time. Didn't affect anybody except me. But I'm not alone anymore. Maybe the others haven't changed, Anne, but I have. I couldn't be content to stay here again without you. You could never be happy living here, even with me. Our lives are just beginning. We've got to make something of them. Iris! Iris! Hey, Sam! The island's on fire! What? The wind turns it's going to be terrible. Everybody down the beach! Where's Selma and John? Fire! 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 Crazy! Yes, that is crazy! What are you trying to do? Put the whole island on fire? Well, why not? 
But knowing you were cold, Senator, I'll offer you a jacket. Time somebody did something, you studiously avoided making any effort to signal the passing ship, so I put it on myself. If you were so anxious to leave, why did you come to me for advice? We've had enough of your well, advice. Well, it's a pity, but this is all wasted effort. The ship lanes are miles away, and in the opposite direction. They couldn't possibly have seen your fire from here. This is north, Johnny. The nearest northern ship lane from here is over a thousand miles. So I think you'd better pick up your pail and shovel and play nearer home. But, but, uh, I'll find a way yet. Well, I hope it's at least as good as this one. But, but, uh, uh, oh. I tell you, that Chinaman's pulling a bat. We should have hit China by now. I don't know what we're trying to do about it. We ran out of gas. Well, we should have been in China before we ran out of gas. Well, we're not. I'll see what I'll do. I'll stand this boat myself. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take the Chinaman. Come on, I'll see you with him. Nice breed. Yes, very nice. And we ought to be tearing off some real money. Oh, yes. Where we still land the Solomon Islands. Oh, someday, baby. We tag. We tag. You've been saying that for two weeks. When do we hit the mainland? Maybe two days, maybe three, maybe never. Pretty quick now. You're lying to me. You've been going around in circles. I'll give you three days to throw me some land. And if you don't, you'll never put your hands in the room again. All right. You sail them both. You know we don't know how to sail them both. Oh, baby, you did that to me. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we've been too good to you. <laughs> You gotta do better. I do best I can. Come you, my dear. Now go take him on. You gotta do better than that. Tell me something, darling, but honestly. All right. Have you been happy these last few days? Happier than I've been for a long time. Let's forget everything that ever happened in the past. I've already forgotten. We need never think about it again. From now on, we live in the present. And think of the future. Ah, that's just what we won't do. Why not? The future has everything to offer. Of course it has. Our little community is getting along very well. And... No, Jim. It's not our future on this island I'm thinking about. This is only half living. It's the nicest half. You know that isn't true. Unless we face our responsibilities, we can't respect ourselves, much less each other. This may sound like an empty promise, Anne. There doesn't seem to be any way to fulfill it. But you mean more to me than anything else. If we ever can get away, we'll go together. Oh, it's you. What do you want? Uh, are you alone? Yes, but I'm not lonesome. Uh, uh, are you available? I, I, I want to talk to you. What about? Well, uh, about yourself. All right. Come on in. Ah, what a cozy little place. You're really very clever, Iris. Excellent handicap. Did Thelma make this? So far, Thelma didn't make anything, and if she knows what's good for uh, her... Uh, uh, fighting with Thelma? Allowing selfish motives to interfere with the welfare of the community? What's it to you? I want to put you in my book. I'd hope that you might furnish me with its most interesting material. Well, I'll do anything I can. Fine, that's the proper spirit. You know, in a community such as ours, it's one for all, all for one. What's mine is yours, and it necessarily follows that uh, what's yours is... Mine. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to record for posterity the reactions of a person uh, such as yourself to, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, nature in the wrong. Well, if you're going to get personal... Uh, no, 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 don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm only trying to help. You must live so that no fault can be found with you. Last night I happened to see, not that I wanted to, Malone. Malone put his arm around you like this. Now, don't try to deny it. I saw you. It was just like this. <laughs> Iris, it was a disgrace. What was the disgrace about it? Why, it was the, the very manner in which she... Now, wait a minute, Senator. What possible harm can there be to it? 
Why, all he did was put his arms around me like this and said, well, it's none of your business what he said. Why, you act as if it was a crime. Well, uh, maybe I've been a little too hasty. Perhaps I've misjudged. I'm really beginning to feel as though you're perfectly right. I knew you'd see it my way, Senator. Yes, uh, well, the uh, little talk uh, didn't hurt. In fact, I honestly think that uh, the little understanding talk should uh, uh, come more often. Oh, Senator, what was it you came to see me about? How am I doing, Polly? <laughs> Will you please shut up? Now look, Thelma, I can't whistle at night because you want to sleep. I can't whistle in the daytime because it bothers your nerves. But can a man whistle? See, you're tough to get along with. I'm very easy to get along with. Just tell me how. I told you. Shut up! Now look, Thelma. You've got to get over the jitters. Why don't you settle down and calm yourself? Everybody else around here is trying to make the best of everything. You could be pretty happy if you wanted to be. Thanks for the advice. Well, that's more than advice. Really? Gee, Thelma, don't you think you could learn to care just a little? We're going to be here a long time, you know. Is this your way of uh, proposing? Yeah. Well, this is my way of accepting. She loves me. One, two, three. Can't you put that stuff down? We finally got to the one place in the world where you don't need money, and you can't even forget it here. Oh, I'm just counting it to pass the time away. That's the best way you can pass the time. You're going to be a great disappointment. What do you want it for? What good is it doing you? If you must count something, well, wait until tonight. We'll count the stars. Do you want to have some fun? Sure. Okay, let's burn it. You crazy? Yeah, but not about the money. Okay, kid, let's both go crazy. As long as we're going to wipe out the past, let's complete the job. <laughs> Funny, some guys burn because they love this stuff, and here we are burning it because we love each other. <laughs> there are thousand dollar bills. Funny how geography changes the value of this stuff. You know what we made a great discovery? Money's no good at all. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Seen what? It's marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. I can't believe it. What's the matter? Did you see a ghost or something? A ghost? Oh! <laughs> It's a real thing, a boat, a big, beautiful boat, a magnificent monarch of the sea, coming this way. Come, let me show you. Uh, oh, Johnny, he's made it. A boat. A boat. Let's leave that boat. What's happening? It's Johnny, he's gone crazy. I always knew it was. Taylor, Taylor, Ann, come here. A boat is coming. What? The Navy. The Navy has come to rescue us. I'm positive it's the Navy. Of course, they'd never give up the search for us. Those greyhounds of the sea are everywhere. Oh, here come the Marines. Oh, to get some decent clothes again and a manicure. Gee, I don't feel like I thought I would at all. Come on, let's see what this is all about. Come on, everybody. Nice work, Ping. Hello, Ping. I come back, Mr. Taylor. I knew you would, Ping. What happened, Ping? Where are Honeyman and Brand? Them fall overboard, Mr. Taylor. I think I stand for Mr. Taylor. Where's everybody? Hasn't been so quiet here in a long time. They're down at the beach trying to hold the senator back. Don't tell me he's going to swim out to the boat. That's what they're afraid of. He wants to get the best bunk. Yeah, well, he'll sleep on deck and like it. Oh, don't worry about the senator. He'll find something in the Constitution to provide him with a bunk. <laughs> now I'll have to start worrying about a job all over again. Don't worry, I'll help you find a job. As a strike breaker in one of your factories? No, I learned something on that island. There are going to be a lot of changes. I'm writing a history of our stay on this island. Now, let's see. After I saved those who survived, I took on the responsibility of leadership and set about establishing a democratic community. I was given the title of... You know, honey, I've got a pretty good idea. It better be a new one. 
What do you say when we get to Hong Kong, we tie the knot? Then we can buy ourselves a little boat like this and head back to the island and spend our honeymoon. I'll go for the first part of it. But we'll spend the honeymoon and the money in Shanghai. <laughs> like I'm the boss, all right. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, things aren't quite the way you figured them out for yourself, are they, pal? Not quite. You got a big stretch to do? I had a hunch you were on the lam from the beginning. After all, if I didn't know the signs, who would? Look, Jim, if this dough is of any use to you, just say the word. Afraid I can't use it where I'm going. Stuff a rapper's that, eh? Well, 150 grams, a lot of dough in any man's country. Don't forget you can count on me. Thanks, sir. Take this wheel and keep the compass right where it is. Okay? You made up your mind you still want to go back? I thought we all had. Taylor's only going back on account of you. The rest of us are riding on velvet. Haven't you any idea why he didn't want to go back? Because the minute this boat hits port, there's going to be somebody there to grab him. To me like you better make plans for your future alone. I don't think so. Kept her right on the line, Cap. Okay, thank you. What's the matter? I was talking to Malone. Jim, is it too late for me to change my mind? Couldn't we go back to the island or uh, anywhere? No, I... I... You've made me see everything very clearly. We must face life, not run away. You have your work to do, and I, well, I have a matter to clear up. We may be separated for a little while. No, Jim. Whatever it is, we'll face it together. <laughs> 